you cannot resell the domain as a profit at a profit you must uh, you know basically if you don't use it you turn it in and it gets turned around for the same price to anybody else in my opinion this policy is lacking and caused a lot of ill will and bad faith in the legacy domain for example in the dot-com market where the domain name speculation was rampant and it caused a lot of ill will Can and you tell us a little bit about and caused some people to make money for example internet.com something that has that type of generic cachet somebody registered that early on maybe in 1995 or 96 for hundred dollars which is what a domain registration cost at that time and then they sold it for a million or ten million dollars or ten something like that. Ten million dollars. But the the purpose wow. of create that's to me is like real for estate speculation. You're creating an artificial market. Right. And for me, it's much more important that there be use and not speculation. You know, if you look at speculation, what that's done to the housing market and how that has damaged our economy and created other kinds of crises and ill will. You know, we've already seen this in the, the domain market with speculation in dot-com, with trademark infringement and a lot of bad faith use or confusion that was generated. I don't feel that's necessary to repeat that again. And also, it's the resellers who make all that money and the registry, basically in our case, being the wholesalers of the top-level domain, really don't benefit at all and the public doesn't benefit from speculation either. So for .nyc, what we've also done is we've reserved a list of generic domains that have high appeal and high value and we will hold an auction to the highest bidder to uh, assign those domains to license those domains for use not this for is resale. A plan. This is not this in is the a work. plan yes this, this is, this is, a, this, is this is a proposal yeah. this is our policy that we've uh, formulated on on what to do and then the proceeds of this fund we will put into a uh, fund that is dedicated toward ed education and helping the schools in New York City. For example, uh, people may know of the Nicholas Negroponte from MIT, the one laptop per child idea. That's great because most people are uh, supportive of this and it's a wonderful thing, but it's generally being done in the third world, in Africa. We need this in New York City. Our school children need to have uh, laptops and resources and uh, wireless internet. And so as part of the public good, raising this funds from the sale of uh, the high value NYC domains or the normal dot NYC domains can contribute towards this fund where we can, for example, mm -hmm. set up a one laptop per child and a free wireless. Well, for I can tell you control. one elementary school that just reported a $200,000 budget cut this year. So obviously, there needs city. to be a public good, and there needs to be some way that the internet and our community—not uh, two hundred thousand, I meant two million dollars. Pardon me. I can imagine the, the, all the city is in crisis right now, and and really the schools and the youth are our future. And if we don't support that in some way, and if, for example, Project Namespace is not successful in getting the top-level domains that it created and operating them under its model, those domains are just going to go to the big business and they're going to pocket the money and there's going to be no public good and then really the overall economic development in New York City is going to be minimal. The fact that Name.Space has literally hundreds of top level domains and that infrastructure would be operated right here in New York City, the social enterprise behind that and our type of programs to educate people and to help them to develop their on social entrepreneurial projects uh, will have a much greater economic impact, for example, than just dot .NYC alone. How did you think up all these names? Did you sit down and like write up all these names? You know, in 1996, when Name.Space started and our, and our software was running on the internet, uh, we did a survey and we got responses from all over the world, what type of top-level domains did people think would be useful? And out of that, we editorialized a list and created these and made them available. We finally for made it to Z. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's quite a number of Before them. Before I zoned out, yeah. Quite interesting. All right, now uh, you were going to show us a little bit about uh, how to resolve these. This is very interesting. Yeah, uh, Paul, go to the, the other uh, browser screen. I think uh, it's behind this, this one. one. Yeah. Yep, and then click to the next tab. Okay.
And as you can see, uh, you can type in, if people can see this, it's a little bit small. Can Let's you see if I can make it bigger? The, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, a little bit better. Okay. One more click. One more click. So people can read it. All right. That's okay, there you there go. There we go. All right. So you can type in, for example, uh, let them dot talk, and you can see that resolves to an IP address. So right. in name dot space, these domains are active. You can see that. Right. Uh, try, for example, Starbucks dot sucks. Can you <laughs> type that in there? And yes. We can see that the dot sucks domain. Starbucks dot S U C K S. Oh, you I spelled hit. it wrong. You need a U oh. in there. I think okay. that keyboard's a little sticky. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. Here. The U. There it goes. All right. All right. I feel and use it. Query that. And then you should see the result. Okay. You see that it also resolves to an IP address. All right. And there it is. It's an address. So it really, that means it exists. That means that it exists, yes. Now, uh -huh. the whole internet is not able to get dot sucks. People can individually uh, set their computers to resolve this. But the point is that dot sucks and dot NYC, dot art, dot radio, dot chat, et cetera, et cetera, dot music are included in the global route so that everybody can register with them and use them. And the funds that are generated from that would be applied towards some public good uh, in a social right. enterprise sense. I see. Very good. Well, uh, Paul, let me join you over here. We have uh, just three minutes. So uh, I want to just sum up, and uh, this is very interesting, all this material that we're talking about here. Uh, what, um, for folks, does this matter to folks who are just like surfing or watching us right now on the internet? Because we're available at MNN.org. You could be watching this right now on the internet. Does this affect the lives of the average internet user, those millions of people out there? Yes, it does. And what it has to do with, first of all, uh, the result of our antitrust suit, because Network Solutions got immunity, they did not have, they were not compelled to add our domain. So we've been unable to provide them to the public under our model. But the result of our lawsuit, actually, the public good that was done is that a domain registration can take uh, place costing less than $100. Mm -hmm. When we sued, it cost $100 to register a domain. So for everybody who registered the, a domain for, say, $30 or less, you benefited from right. our lawsuit because it forced them to restructure the market to allow wholesale and retail. The second impact is the whole question of media ownership. And then basically, if the large corporations continue to control the domains, they're going to continue in the digital realm to only own the media, and we will always be consumers. Even if we're producers like here at MNN, for example, we're still not owners of the infrastructure itself, of the media infrastructure itself. And as A.J. Liebling quite wisely said, freedom of the press belongs to the owner. I see what freedom you're of media belongs to the owner of media. And in the namespace social enterprise local media ownership model, we are setting up a situation where as citizens can become stakeholders and have some kind of a say and a stake in the type of media that goes out, and also the rights, the artist equity, the rights that the artist has to their own work. All right, to sum up, it was very interesting. Earlier on, for folks who are watching behind us, you saw a list of names. That is the internet. That text file, a text file means just A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, and a few other symbols. That file, which you saw go back, go by from beginning to end, is pretty much the entire internet, the entire well, all that's that. That's the center or the root of the domain system. That's fascinating to me. It's that in is. one place, and that file is copied to those various servers we saw listed. Right. And then every domain query is basically processed through that list. So if that list isn't there, if you're not on that list, if you don't have access to that list, you're not on the internet. If your top-level domain is not on that list, uh, generally, the rest of the internet cannot access, for example, .sucks or .nyc. Wow, Paul Garen bringing us that fascinating insight and showing it to us right here on our program, Let Them Talk. I think that was fascinating. Thank you very much for showing us the truth about how the internet operates. Paul Garen, my good friend, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Welcome to Let Them Talk.